Hello, my most amazing artists. Today, you're going to be creating your very own Mary Blair artist inspired castles, just like she did for Walt Disney World in the story Pocket Full of Colors. She created the castle for the ride, It's a Small World, which used a lot of colors, lines, designs, patterns, and shapes. So you're going to have these different castle design guides to give you some ideas. But the first thing you do is always the same. Make sure you pick up a pencil and write your name. I know I did that really fast on the back, but now I'm using a, my ruler as a tool, not a toy. That's going to help me make some of those very geometric straight lines like Mary Blair did for her buildings. You're becoming an architect, somebody who makes a plan for a building like a br blueprint before it actually gets built. So I'm using my ruler, holding it both horizontally, side to side, and then switching it over to vertical, up and down, to trace those sides of the ruler. I'm making some buildings really tall and some a little shorter. Some can be skinny and some can be wide. But notice how it was a lot easier when I used the ruler than when I drew it freehand. That's up to you. You can absolutely draw your buildings on your own or use that ruler. Just remember, it's a tool, not a toy. It's not meant to be bent. It's not meant to be played with. It's meant to be used to help you draw straight lines or measure. So now that I drew my buildings, I'm going to make those squares on my buildings like Mary Blair does. She breaks up those buildings into different lines and designs, but starting with squares or rectangles inside of each building shape. That way, you can do a different design in each one, just like it's on the guide. I even included a big clock, just like It's a sw Small World does, and has that giant clock there. So I'm going to break up my buildings into different shapes using big shapes, like big circles or triangles or squares. I have a lot of squares. Now I'm going to add some tops of the buildings. Notice I turned over the guide to the castle domes. A dome is something that's on top of the building. Sometimes it includes a secret hideout or an attic or a lookout to look over the city. Then you can create different flags or things to put on top. You can look through those guides for all kinds of different ideas for your very own castle. Think about your dream castle and what kinds of things it would have. Just make sure you're drawing really big and always start with pencil and draw light, light, light till you get it right because you get one piece of paper and this is the special painting paper because we will be painting these in next week. So make sure you're drawing big because if you draw anything too tiny and detailed, even I'm getting pretty close with tininess right there, it's gonna be really hard to paint in next week with a paintbrush. So I'm making sure that I'm doing large designs and getting some ideas from that idea sheet. You're gonna need some windows and doors on your castle. So make sure you think of different ways or look at the paper for different ways to make windows and doors on your castle buildings. You want a lot of details using different lines, shapes, and designs and patterns. So I'm making all different kinds of lookouts, maybe some different decks where people could walk out and look over top of the city. I'm thinking Walt Disney World with a castle or It's a Small World with all the different shapes that she used in her art. If you've ever been on that ride, this might look familiar and it probably looked familiar in the book too. So I'm just taking my pencil and using some of those ideas to fill in every single part of my castle. After you fill everything in, we're going to be tracing it with a Sharpie. But make sure that you fill up most of your paper with lines, designs, and patterns for your castle. You don't want to leave too much empty space. Also, don't worry about what's above the castle. I'm not worried about anything in the sky because I want my whole castle to take up most of my paper. I even put my paper horizontal side to side so I could fit more buildings on my castle. If I held it the other way, I would have been able to fit tall buildings, but not a whole lot of them. So that's why I held it this way. After you've got all of your details on there and you've looked through the guide, you can't think of anything else, then it's time to trace over your lines with Sharpie. Make sure that you are using either the fine point Sharpie for little tiny details or what I prefer, which is the regular point Sharpie. It looks like this. Uh-oh, but that one's not working very well. It looks like it ran out of ink because somebody probably left the cap off. So you can always trade me for a new one, but let me know so nobody else uses the bad one again. Always put your Sharpie cap back on to prevent that from happening to anybody else. Then trace over all your pencil lines. Notice I'm not coloring anything in with Sharpie. I can add things as I think of new ideas or change them if I don't like what I drew with pencil, but I'm not coloring anything in. I'm gonna save the coloring for when I have paint. My Sharpie is just for outlining. 
Think of this like a coloring book. Coloring books just have outlines so that you can color them in later. So I'm outlining all my pencil lines, making sure I get every single one, even the windows, the doors, the little lines inside. And if you need to switch over to the smaller Sharpie for teeny tiny details, like if you had any words or signs or like little tiny eyes like on that clock, then I can switch to the small Sharpie. After you trace, you erase. We do this to clean up your drawing so that it's ready to paint next week and doesn't have pencil lines and eraser shavings everywhere. But also, it's to make sure that you have traced everything. If you erase your paper, holding your eraser in the safety zone of your letter L, and you notice that something's suddenly gone, well, that means you forgot to trace over with Sharpie. That happened to me. So I went ahead and went back to my Sharpie and traced over it. No big deal. After you trace and erase, that's all we have to do today. If you finish, you're going to put it in your portfolio, make sure your name's on the back, and then clean up and put your caps on your Sharpies. Have fun artists creating your very own Mary Blair-inspired castles.